I'm gonna try to keep it short because there's a lot of information to kind of get in here and I wanna talk about Mount Vernon. So uh, bear with me really quick. I'm gonna go over my favorite parts here. Uh, number one was the uh, the key of uh, Bastille. It was actually given to him by uh, Marquis de Lafayette. Uh, you know, that guy that helped us win the Revolutionary War by going to France and, and asking for guns and ships and, um, you know, how however else Hamilton goes. But he, he played a big role and him and George Washington actually became really good friends to the point where uh, Lafayette ended up naming his son after George Washington, and I mean literally his name was George Washington uh, Louis uh, Louis the uh, uh, Louis Gilbert de Lafayette. So George Washington uh, Lafayette was his son's name, directly named after George Washington. And in fact, when the uh, French Revolution happened, Lafayette was a huge target, him and his family. So he sent his son to go live with Martha and George in their house in Mount Vernon for his safety. He had his own room, he got decorated his own way, a uh, little weird bit of history there. Very simple taste, wood floors, uh, basic bedding. The only weird part was he had a full on painted portrait of his dad right in front of his bed staring at him and I don't know about you but I don't want a picture of or a picture or a portrait of my dad staring at me while I'm trying to sleep at night but uh, to each his own I guess at the end of the day uh, but uh, he was uh, George Washington was given the key to Bastille from Lafayette as a, as a token of their friendship together uh, and that was that was pretty cool and it's just kind of hanging there in their their hallway. <laughs> I mean, where, where do you put the key to Bastille? I mean, it's hanging on the wall, I guess. <laughs> I mean, that's what they did. Uh, other parts that I really liked. Uh, the, every bit of that house was painted differently, and uh, you know, back then it was a, it was a show of wealth. Uh, in fact, one of the things he did in his new room it was this uh, it was a uh, huge vaulted ceiling. Uh, painted green because it was pleasing to the eye uh, and, and what they actually did is they painted over wallpaper yes they put wallpaper up first and then painted over it uh, and because that was a sign of wealth uh, back then I do that today and I think you're gonna get the opposite uh, feeling from that I think you're gonna give off quite the opposite feel if you paint over your wallpaper today so probably don't try that today or do I don't know it's not my problem it's yours uh, 
And uh, in his dining room, he actually painted it this, this bright fluorescent green and they put copper in it uh, and it would oxidize and it would make this cool color and then eventually it would oxidize too much and they'd have to paint it over again. And still to this day, they still put green copper paint on this and they have to paint it constantly because it oxidizes and looks bad. Uh, the other kind of funny thing about all the colors that they painted, um, Christy pointed out, that we're taking the kind of the tour of the house and at one point she leans over and she goes, have you noticed that every room is painted like one of the rooms we had in our house at one point? And I kind of laughed and it's like, okay, yeah, we, we had this bright green accent wall in our living room. Uh, there's a, a blue bedroom, a blue themed bedroom with white accents. And we had a kitchen that was the same color blue and white accents everywhere. Uh, the new room that he had, which was kind of his show off room, look how big and powerful I am. It was painted kind of this light green and the exterior of our house was painted that color. As Christy pointed that out and I'm sitting there going, all right, yeah, George Washington had good taste in colors like me. All right, we got something in common. So a little backstory on the house. The, the house was actually owned by his father. Um, and when his father passed away, he actually gave it to his older brother who had passed away and his uh, sister-in-law actually owned the house. And she was told that if you don't have any children um, alive when you pass away, the house needs to go to George Washington, the next, next, uh, next person in line. Well, two years later, she did pass away uh, and um, her, her name was actually Anne Fairfax Washington. So Anne Fairfax Washington uh, had some children that unfortunately died at a young age and um, when she died, house went to George. Uh, that was 1761, and George had actually been living in the house uh, since 1750. He had actually already done a remodel on the house. What he had done is he had uh, actually taken the roof, he, he designed it and hired crews and, and actually helped work on the house. He raised the roof up, added a whole second floor to it, and even added a quasi third floor uh, for the, the house servants to stay in. Uh, and then, uh, you know, he, he lived in it for a little while and uh, Martha ended up joining him in the house there. Once they got married, she brought her children. The, the Washingtons never had children of their own, but George was a good guy and he, uh, he took on those children of Martha like they were his own. Two years before he was tapped to be the general of the army, uh, he started actually renovating the house for the second time. He added on uh, to the south side of the building uh, their personal bedroom, uh, a changing room for Martha, a study for himself, study library, workspace for himself with his own changing room, and some other little updates to the house here and there that uh, really aren't worth going into. Uh, so, but that was the, the second remodel. Then, uh, in 1774, uh, or no, pardon me, 1774 was when he started the second reno, uh, 1776 is when he started the north end. And basically what had happened is uh, it looked like, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna do all right and uh, you know let's let's add on to this house so they started that well of course the Revolutionary War continued on and uh, they finished the exterior but they never finished the interior so he actually returned home uh, in 1783 Christmas Eve and uh, the said all right let's start let's start fixing up this uh, this new add-on to the house and they made uh, the the new room, which was designed to uh, convey beauty and fine craftsmanship uh, to reflect the, the nation he was helping to create. And so in it he had portraits of himself done, portraits of uh, the battles, uh, portraits of him and his family, the house before he had actually started renovating. Just very, very well done in the sense of um, look at all that I have achieved in life. Uh, look at this great nation we're building, but it wasn't too in your face. So uh, I think he nailed it with that one. Shortly thereafter, he actually started the third add-on to the house, which was uh, the exterior work and um, some other stuff. Nothing, nothing new was really added to the house. It was uh, just more updates and stuff like that. And then his final thing that he did two years before he died, he had he had actually um, ordered from Pennsylvania in Philadelphia. Uh, someone to create a gold weather vane that was a dove and an olive branch and uh, just topped off the house very nicely. It, it was a weather vane but it doubled as a lightning rod and it still to this day protects the house from lightning strikes fairly 
regularly, honestly, is what we were told from the tour. The, the grounds were, were massive. Like I said, it was 500 acres remains of the original 8,000. Uh, 500 is a lot to walk, and, and we walked a good, a good bit of it. And, um, you know, we saw the stables, we saw uh, all the support housing for, let's, let's face it, they, Martha Washington and George Washington both had slaves. They had slave quarters. Uh, George Washington was actually a firm believer that you should live close to your work. So he had the uh, house servants were actually in, inside the house on the third floor. Uh, they had support staff that lived in segregated male and female housing. And they did stuff uh, like work in the blacksmith shop, uh, worked with the horses, uh, all that stuff, you get what I'm talking about. Um, the, the cooking, all that. Uh, and then, so that was all kind of by the house. And then down the hill uh, where the gardens were, where they grew all the food for the house and hemp, <laughs> uh, they had housing down there too. Uh, to give George Washington some credit, uh, upon his deathbed, he, um, he knew he was going to die. And uh, so he asked Martha to bring him his two wills. He had two wills down in his office. She brought him up, bath up. He read both of them, looked at it, and said, all right, this one's going in the fire. This one needs to be put into place. Martha burned the wand and started activating the, the first one upon his death. Uh, and the first thing that he had done is he had his slaves set free, his personal ones. Uh, Martha still maintained hers until her death. Uh, so you got to give him some credit. He, he did what was right in the end. Um, so it doesn't absolve him, but uh, at least it was a step in the right direction, I guess. Uh, upon his death also, he, he had actually said that uh, a new tomb needs to be built for the Washingtons. Ones that w one that would reflect uh, the family and um, convey the power that they had. Um, and so when he first died, he was, he was put into a nice coffin and put into the family tomb. Uh, the old family tomb which you can actually see today uh it, it not glamorous it is a hill with a door cut into it and in fact it took quite a while for the the family to get around building a new tomb for everybody uh there was some money issues some arguing about where when and how and all that but it got done eventually and when they actually pulled martha washington and george washington out of the tomb you know both of their coffins were very beat up not not up to uh, the, the level that should be for people of great power like that, in, in their own words, the, the family's own words. So they had a, a new coffin made and they actually had two um, stone sarcophaguses made for the, the coffins to actually be set into. And that's what you see uh, when you're looking at the video. On the right is George, on the left is Martha, there's a door behind them, and behind them there are 21 other Washington family members. There's four off to the side of them with their own obelisks. Uh, they actually look a lot like the Washington Monument, ironically enough. Uh, and uh, very nicely done. Uh, they, it, it pays homage to, uh, to them quite well. Uh, I would definitely suggest anyone that is on the fence or thinking about it, go. It's worth the, the price. The price is nominal. It's, it's not expensive to go by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, and you just step back into time. You can you can see how this guy lived, and and you really do understand. Uh, I know the children's absolute favorite part, at least Max's was, is there are these things called necessaries. So back then they didn't have indoor plumbing, and you did not go in the house other than a chamber pot. So they had outdoor outhouses, and uh, let's just say you better be pretty comfortable with your uh, family and your guests because they're they're not all that private uh so that was max's favorite part there uh the girls loved the garden that they actually had designed and there was a character actor in there and he was very very insightful on why and how things were planted and george washington didn't like wasting space so he actually layered his his garden or his flower garden i should say so that you could see tall flowers in the middle followed by a nice row down uh the trees were actually planted and and they were controlled to grow in an outward direction and i imagine if you weren't there in the fall it'd be very beautiful with all the colors and all that it was still very beautiful minus all the colors because it was fall and falls amazing uh, the exterior of the house was really cool too it's all wood but it doesn't look like it or feel like it uh, so what they had done is they had taken wood they hand chiseled out 
blocks in it to make it look like stone blocks. And then they painted it, and before the paint dried, they took sand and threw it at it. And uh, it does a really cool effect. It, it makes it look like stone. It gives it a really good protection. In fact, um, they said that when they peel back to this day, when they peel back the layers of paint, they still find some of the original boards and stuff like that protected by this method. So I think eventually I might try that myself on uh, maybe a shed at first, but I think it'd be cool to do a house eventually. Very labor intensive, but I think it is very worth it at the end. And if it protects that house as well uh, as it did, it, it's very worth it. Uh, so again, yeah, if you get the chance, go. Definitely, definitely can't uh, can't suggest it enough. Uh, let's catch up on the rest of what's been going on really quick. Uh, after uh, Mount Vernon, it's actually close to Alexandria, Virginia. We decided, well, the trailer's still not done. Let's uh, let's go out to Virginia Beach. Virginia Beach was good. Uh, we were way off season, so a lot of things were closed. Uh, I imagine it'd be a lot more fun in the uh, spring and summer. But in winter, it's uh, everything kind of shuts down. Uh, we, we did get two good days on the beach. Uh, you know, it was, was kind of weird to be on the beach in uh, without shoes on in uh, mid-November, but it, it worked. Uh, if you don't like crowds, sure, go to Virginia Beach in the winter. There's not a lot of people there, and you have the run of the beach. Claire loved it, I know that much. Uh, after that, we actually went back to Williamsburg because the trailer was supposed to be done before Thanksgiving. Lo and behold, trailer didn't get done before Thanksgiving. Had a lovely time with my sister, brother-in-law, and their kids there. They, they took amazing care of us, and thank you guys so much. I mean, that was a pure treat to be there and um, just be appreciated like you guys did for us. Thank you so much. Uh, after that, the trailer still was not done, and we found a piece of property that is for sale up in upstate New York. And so we decided to go to back up and take a look at it. So right now we are in Johnstown and it's cold. It snowed the last couple days. Uh, we're actually an hour north of Cooperstown. So we are right back where we were a couple weeks ago. Uh, we, we just drove straight from Williamsburg. It was about a nine hour drive straight from Williamsburg to our uh, hotel here. And it snowed and the kids loved it. And um, we like it up here. It's, it's very nice. Uh, we'll, we'll see if it works out, but uh, so far, so good. Uh, we are going to be heading back down to Williamsburg starting tomorrow. Hopefully the trailer will be done. Uh, now, please don't think that this has anything negative to do about the trailer place. They've actually just been amazing throughout this whole thing. It's not their fault it's taking longer. It's not their fault that they found more problems. And it's not their fault that uh, places shut down for Thanksgiving and holidays. Uh, you know, just a quick rundown. We took it in there originally for the water damage and they hopped right on it. We have new flooring in there, we have new subflooring, we have new insulation, uh, new underbelly skirting. Uh, they replaced a couple other little things here and there, but then they started finding some other problems. You know, the one of the, the slides actually, when we were in Montana, we realized that the slide's not sitting in there right. And so I called one of my friends who's uh, a lot smarter than myself and, and he kind of talked me through uh, how to correct the problem and you know I, I did it to the best of my ability but it still wasn't right uh, so when we took it in there you know I said hey there's this other thing we've been noticing for a little while now could you please take a look at it? And he said well to replace the flooring the slides has got to come out anyway so when we put it back in we'll take a look well lo and behold a bracket had broken that holds the slide together and holds it up and the trailer manufacturer does not sell the bracket separately so they had to two days before thanksgiving find a shop to manufacture this new bracket and of course good luck finding a machine shop to jump on something quick like that right before thanksgiving or any holiday really you're not going to get a quick return and uh, they they got it now and it's it's back together but when they were putting the slide back in they realized that the motor wasn't working and so they did a bunch of tests and they found out that the control panel somehow the positive wire had come loose and grounded off the ground and caused problems I don't know what the full repair is because I haven't talked to them about that yet but um, I if to my understanding it was a whole new control panel so that was part of the hold up plus a litany of other little things throughout uh, the trailer was not put together from the factory correctly on the front cap it was sitting kind of cockeyed in there 
and uh, we hit a big bump and it cracked part of the front cap. So that was definitely gonna have to be fixed eventually. So we were like, well, let's just get it done while we're in there. So that, that added a couple days. Uh, the front flush system for the black tank, uh, it did not work from day one, even though the, ma the manufacturer said, yep, it's installed right. And the, the dealer we bought it from said, well, we looked over and we got it to work. Well, I've never gotten it to work. And the, this place said, yep, we couldn't get it to work either. And we're tearing it apart and looking at it. Uh, we were actually supposed to get the trailer back today. I did not get a call from them. So I'm assuming that they ran into more problems and that is not their fault. Thank you guys for working as hard as you have to correct this, this problem. But tomorrow we're gonna start slow rolling our way back down to um, Williamsburg. I, I really don't wanna drive for nine hours again, uh, especially with Washington DC traffic as we have learned three, gonna be four separate times now. There is no good time to go through Washington DC unless it is two in the morning before, and between five in the morning before anybody's really there trying to do anything. Uh, so we're gonna probably break it up into two days. Um, and hopefully we'll get the trailer back and uh, we'll be able to continue on at that point. But, uh, so there you go, you're all caught up. Thanks for listening, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. This is actually one of those videos that I am particularly proud of. Uh, there's nothing new or innovative about it. I just genuinely had a good time filming it. Everything kind of fell together nice when I was editing. And um, the only thing that really struggled was this, the, the recording of this. Um, you know, I'll be, I'll be honest, I had two really bad days there where I was uh, just, just kind of uh, not, not feeling it and struggled but uh, I think I'm in a better spot now mentally and um, just just happy to have another video to share with you guys so again thanks for watching thanks for taking interest in our uh, our story and uh, we'll see you next time